How can it be explained that such monsters as Hitler or Stalin were moved to tears by music? Clearly, they must have associated human emotion with something in the music. But at the same time, they failed or chose. They failed to make a connection between the ethical and the aesthetical. They saw music as a haven outside of real life, one that was associated with pure enjoyment. In other words, the beauty of music, which I've already described as a physical expression of the human spirit, was relegated to a remote area of the dictatorial brain where it was not permitted to make contact with other areas of the intellect which might have directly influenced thought and behavior. Whatever it was in the music that moved them was not allowed to seek its equivalent in human life and action. This anomaly, which is particularly ironic in light of the inhuman brutality of these two men's deeds, may seem banal in the context of ordinary people's lives. Nevertheless, the chasm between ethics and aesthetics, or to take a more concrete example, between the understanding of life and the understanding of music, has dire consequences for a society that suffers more every day from the alienating effects of specialization. There is no end to what music can teach us if we are able and willing to delve into it and not segregate it from our intellectual lives. Music has been banished over the years to a remote kingdom of pleasure and escape, assumed to have nothing to say to the parts of our brains that determine everyday thought or life. Or, this is a sad state of affairs for all involved. Music has the capacity to express what humanity can do when it overcomes its limitations. Music possesses the power of communication between human beings regardless of their gender, race, or nationality. All this may be because music puts us on a path from chaos to order. It is a path that starts from an idea, even a disordered one, and proceeds to the development and completion of a work that is supported and sustained by its own logic. If I can understand the creative process that leads to a finished work and am able to retrace the steps from disorganized material to concise statement, then I might be in a position to truly recreate the music in performance from the opposing starting point, namely, by starting from the completed work and going through a process of deconstruction and analysis in order to arrive at the distilled original idea. If in addition, I can draw parallels between this process and everything in life that interests or touches me, then I may have understood the very nature of music. 